Hello everyone, and welcome back to this next video in the eHoudini Academy Foundation module. In this video, we are going to work on turning these placeholder elevator and staircase shapes here into actual staircases and elevator shafts. And we're going to make sure that they are traversable. Now, I don't have an elevator blueprint for you in this module. For that one, we'll actually build a dedicated elevator in the next module of the master class, which will be the uh, ascension module. But for now, we are going to make a simple shape. And if you already have an elevator of sorts, you can fit it in here because we do have doors and they do reach every level of the building. Next to that, the staircases are also fully traversable. We will make sure that depending on the height of our floor, we are either going to add more steps to our staircase. So the step height between each step is manageable for the player character. So we can actually traverse these stairs, no matter the height of our floors. And also, as the player goes down the stairs and ends up between two layers, we also need to make sure that he can't collide with the ceiling. But if we make our floors too tall, we also need to make sure that um, the stairs themselves get multiplied so that we have multiple flights of stairs between each level. Let's say we take the floors of our building and make them a lot taller. Let's say we make them 8 meters tall. So in this case, one flight of stairs won't be enough in order for the player to traverse up into the building. Instead, we will need multiple flights of stairs to reach the top. As you can see, here's a door. This level doesn't have a door. And then we have a door again. And that's to make sure that the stairs don't get too steep. We basically start um, multiplying them as we need to. We can also control the width of the stairs and that will control how the stairs shape themselves in here. So if I make the um, staircases wider, let's say I make them two units wide, which is two grid units on our building wide. Then as a result, we will make our stairs wider but as long as we don't change the depth of our landing or our back turn over here, um, this won't change. Now let's say I change those as well. Let's set these to 2.5. As a result, our stairs have now become a lot bigger, but the back turn still functions and we can still traverse the place. So if I grab my player character now and I walk inside, I can still use these stairs to get up to another floor. So all of that works. And then at the top, we have this end cap, which is a small building about the size of a door. Um, but basically, we are going to add a separate cap on top of the building. So we have an exit for the roof. So let's go ahead and look inside the Houdini scene on what we'll be building today. So inside of our example file, I'm going to zoom in. And over here is the section that we'll be building today. That is the elevator over here, which is basically a stack of boxes with holes in them for doors. Then over to the right, we have a duplicate of this network with a couple of extra components. So first we create another stack of boxes, this time with the ability to change the position of the door on this. And then next to that, we're going to add the steps as well. So here we have the steps and they're being positioned in such a way that if we copy them into place with our actual outer housing, they will line up with the doors. And if we make, like I showed you before, the building taller, then it is going to also scale this up as well and start duplicating our stairs. So depending on where our doors are, we will have additional steps. And I've set it up in such a way that no matter the height of the floors, the player should never be blocked because the moment it gets too tiny, it will make less stairs. And this only really becomes a problem when we start to push the um, height of the building too small at which point the player might not be able to navigate the building anyway. So let's make sure we keep the building at a manageable size and then the staircases should always work. 
So with this, let's move over to our main project and let's get started on building this out. So to begin, um, first I would like to work on the elevator shapes because these are ultimately the simpler element in what we need to build. So let's get started with these. We already have a basic elevator shaft shape and because this is a very simple shape, we won't need to make too many adjustments to this. We can already use the existing point that spawns the um, elevator base shape and then we can build it based off of that. So let's grab this network here. I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to just move all of this down and scale this thing up. So we have some space to work with. Then next, let's start building the elevator itself. Now for that, um, I want to grab a basic grid to create the base shape of our elevator. Let's spawn one of those. Now this grid is going to have the same size as our elevator shaft shape over here. Now to keep it simple, let's just go over here and copy the size in X and Z. So let's grab these, copy its parameter, and let's paste it in over here. And then I'm going to copy that, and I'm just going to plug it into the right for Z. So that will give us a grid to the same scale as our current elevator um, shaft shape. Now at this moment I noticed that my interior grid scale on my building project is not currently set to the uh, size of 4 meters. So I'm going to set this one over to 4 meters by default. And you'll notice how this one should then scale along because it's grabbing its size from over here and this one is grabbing its size directly from the interior grid scale. So it matches the uh, interior grid. As for this grid here, let's um, call this one the elevator shaft outside. Then I'm going to take the amount of points on it and I'm going to set this to two rows and two columns so we just have a simple shape. And then next let's give this thing some height. Now for this I'm going to use another extrude and texture node like we already used before. So over here I have my support pillars. I'm going to grab this one because it does have our um, little expression here that makes sure that the UVs for our pillars are always scaled up and duplicated if the pillar gets too tall. So we never get too much stretching in our texture. I'm going to copy this extrude and texture node and I'm going to plug it in behind my elevator shaft outside. Now this will already give me some settings so I do need to reconfigure this a little. First, I do not need to subtract the floor depth for our elevators because our elevators are going to go straight through the floors of our building. So we don't want that. In fact, they will need to sit on top of a floor and then go through the next floor as well. Otherwise, we basically will have gaps in the um, elevator shaft and I don't want that. So over here, let's simply say floor height, make it the same height as a floor. And then down here for texture, I'm going to change my texturing style to orthogonal unitized because right now our texture in sweep mode is being sweeped around but I would like to keep our texture this uh, set of gray concrete blocks lined up with our model over here so if I show my UVs let's um, split this one left to right set this one to UV mode then what I want to do is have each of these sides inside a square. So they're exactly fitting inside. Let's set this over to unitized on the side projection. When we do that, you can see that now these concrete blocks are aligning with our shape and inside the UV space, they are exactly inside of this shape as well. So we don't have to worry about that. Now let's first check if our textures are set up correctly. 
what I need in this case is the concrete panels base color, which is already set. For the bottom, I want to have the concrete walls texture and then the same for the top. So um, this should already be set up and we don't have to worry about that. Next, over here under our settings, I need to make sure that we have our um, scaling as well. And you might notice that since we switched it over to unitized mode, our expression has disappeared. That's because it's a different parameter and this parameter is now hidden. So let's go back to our sweep around mode, grab this expression here, and you can either keep it there or delete it. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go back to orthogonal unitized and then drop the expression into the side X texture scale V. So the right channel here, and then we'll do the same thing for the Z channel as well. So that will deal with the height of this. And if I scale up the building, so if I make my um, floor height bigger over here, Let's grab this, set our building's floor height up to say 12. Then now as a result, it will scale up the texture as is necessary and multiply it over here. So that expression should be working. Let's um, return this back to 3.5 and let's continue. So over here, I also want to change the width of my texture. So I'm going to set this to 0.5. Now at this point, this one is set up. Okay, so now that we have the outside of our elevator, let's um, duplicate this set here and make the inside as well. Now before I do that, let me quickly name this one. Let's call this one elevator outside. And then I can make a copy of this copy it over to the right. And again, if your names get too long, you can always rename this a bit. So in this case, I'm just going to remove, let's say the first part of our asset. So I don't have to worry about the spacing here. And then let's rename these two. So this one's going to be elevator shaft inside. And elevator inside. Now as for its shape, I do want this one to be slightly smaller than the outside so I can cut them from one another. To do that, over here in my expression, I am going to take the wall thickness and I'm going to subtract the wall thickness from this times 2. So let's grab my wall thickness value from my parameter panel, go over to my size, and I'm going to say minus the wall thickness times two. And just to make sure, even though math priority will of course make sure that multiplication happens before subtraction or addition, but uh, I'm going to wrap this inside brackets. So I don't have to worry about it, right? Then let's copy this one, this expression and paste it in over here on the right as well. So now we have a shape that is slightly smaller in width and depth, but not in height. Now you might notice that we have a triangulation pattern here. And before I subtract these from one another, I would like to remove that because any polygon shapes that we end up subtracting using a Boolean node is going to be projected onto the other shape. And in this case, I don't want that. So let's grab both of these nodes here, go to our extrude and groups tab and turn off triangulate results. That should remove that for now. Okay, so next let's create a Boolean subtract node. I'm gonna plug this in. So we subtract the inside from the outside. So the primary input is what you take originally and then geometry B is gonna subtract from that. Now in this case, this Boolean node is already configured properly. We don't really have to mess with this. So let's just give it a name. Let's say we call this one Boolean elevator shaft shape. Then next, let's go ahead and add a door. So for this, I'm going to copy my 
inside shape again, as well as this Boolean node. Paste it all down here. And I'm going to plug it up like that. So now let's take the elevator shaft door and I'm going to move its center over in positive X. And you'll notice how it projects new UVs on the part that it cut, but it's also cut the entire door out of the shape. So we basically just remove the entire wall. I don't want to do that. And I also don't want to inject new points on the inside of my elevator shaft, which is what this Boolean node is currently doing. So in order to fix that, I need to do a couple of different things. One, this shape should be exactly in the middle of that wall and have the exact width of that wall. So over here, I'm going to change the center position to be the exact center of the wall over here, this part. To do that, I can use the bounding box expression to grab the outside of this box and then move it inward by half the wall depth. So we uh, basically take our wall thickness over here and subtract that by half. Let's do that first. Over here under center X for elevator shaft door, let's type a bounding box expression. And in this case, I'm just gonna use a simple expression reference. So let's grab Boolean elevator shaft shape, plug that in. And then as the second argument, I'm going to type D underscore X max. And that will, of course, return the world position in X for the outside of the shape. Then let's subtract from that, like I mentioned, half of the wall thickness. So we can just copy this code. And let's say minus our wall thickness times 0 0.5. So when we do that, now our box should be exactly in the middle of the shape. And if you're using the same texture, then you'll notice that we should have a line right in the middle there. So that's one. Next, let's deal with the width of this object. So we actually cut a door in here. For the size in Z, I want to add a bit of frame thickness to this wall because ultimately whenever we created our tiles for the outside of the building, we gave them a frame thickness, if you recall, basically the um, thickness between the outside of the tile and the door or the window. So we're going to use that. Let's grab again from our parameters, in this case our frame thickness, copy that parameter. So over here, under the elevator shaft door node, on the second size channel, I'm going to um, subtract from that our frame thickness as well. So basically, if I grab that and I expand this, we want to take this and subtract it by twice the frame thickness. If you want to make it less thick, you can also do it one time. It's up to you then I'm going to accept that. So this is going to use the frame thickness for the door here as well, just like the outside of our building. And then um, let's change the depth of this box. So it matches the actual depth of the wall. So our texture projection also aligns with that. Let's grab over here the size X channel. And I'm just going to um, take my wall thickness use just that. So with that, it should now project exactly onto that wall. Now, there might be a slight problem with precision. So just in case, I'm going to thicken this just a little bit. Let's say plus 0 0.01. That should be enough. Basically, if the Boolean node is in a cardinal orientation, in general, it's quite accurate. If this shaft were to be rotated any other direction, like you might recall, I did discuss this before, then uh, the Boolean node might fail and it might cause bad cuts. But this only really tends to happen if your shapes are um, coincidental, right? So if they overlap exactly on top of one another. By adding just a little bit of depth here, we avoid that issue altogether because a Boolean node that overlaps another node completely 
doesn't have this issue in general. All right, so then last, let's take our extruding texture node and let's change its extrusion height so that we can actually um, cut out a door and not the entire wall. Over here, under our floor height, I'm gonna make some changes. First, let's take our floor height and subtract the floor depth. Because if we look at the actual floors themselves, if we were to imagine this um, module here sitting on top of a floor, then the top of this would penetrate the next floor over, right? Up to the actual floor level. So we basically want to reduce our extrusion over here with our floor depth. And let's grab our floor depth, copy that parameter, and I'm gonna subtract the height of our extrusion with that. So that will create already a bit of a door shape, right? However, this is still not quite right. I also want to control the actual height of this door with our door bar height, because if this were a very tall floor, then it would also be a very tall door, and I don't want that. So let's use this one here as a clamp value, and then um, use the door bar height as the actual height of our door. Let's go over here. Let's go to the doors and windows section. Copy our door height value. And then over in our extrude node, I'm going to paste it in first. And then I'm going to press Alt E to bring this up so I can edit the expression with everything that we need already there. Let's type um, clamp. Our door upper bar height offset is going to be the actual height of our door. Then the next value is going to be two. If you might recall, we don't want our doors to be um, smaller than two meters or the player won't be able to navigate properly. Then we're going to set the floor height and floor depth as the maximum value. And then let's close that with a bracket. So basically, our clamp expression should look like that. Let's um, accept that. And now we should have a proper door shape in here, no matter what the shape of our building is. And if I make the doors too tall, let's say I set this to four, then at least it won't be higher than the floor above. Now, in this case, we might actually want to add also our frame thickness here as well, so that we have at least a little bit of space between those levels. Um, but I just want to make sure it never goes below two. So let's grab our expression again. And then let's add in here the frame thickness. Now we cannot paste an expression in here. So I'm going to type minus channel reference dollar slash dollar slash frame thickness. And if you see it, you can also select it, right? So like that. So with that now, we will have a door. Um, it should not be able to be smaller than two meters in any case, um, but it also should match the door height as well. So that should be set up. Let's set that back to two. Now there's just one thing left to do here. Um, that we need to do, and that is to set up the UVs for the inside of our door. Because right now these don't actually look proper. Basically, we um, we don't have the right texture and it doesn't have the right layout. So to fix that, let's go over to our extrude and texture for the elevator door. Go to the texture tab. And I'm going to change it over to use orthogonal unitized on both the top and bottom as well. Then for its texture, I'm going to use the concrete bars texture. Let's first do the sides. So this one is going to be concrete bars for both the Houdini preview and the Unreal texture, like so. And then let's set all of these to values of one. So this is going to be deleted as a value of one. And let's rotate the side Z value by 90 degrees. 
So that will position it in an upright direction. Now I need to scale it. For its scale value, let's set the size Z U value to 0 0.21. And that will scale this bars texture to basically just use one bar. And that will work just fine. And if you've built the um, extrude and texture node the same way as I did, then this is the value you want to change. And for the top as well, we need to give that one UVs as well. So for the top UVs, I'm going to change the scale to one each first. Let's set this one to concrete bars as well. We need to rotate this one by 90 degrees and then scale the first value to 0 0.21 as well. So that should now properly give us a concrete texture that looks like it actually belongs in this space. Okay, so that's all the UVs done. We now have a door. We now have this thing set up properly. Let's move on. Let's um, copy this one up so we actually have our elevator shaft itself. If I view all the layers, we need exactly the amount of copies for each floor plus the top level. So over here on the right, we have the create floors, copy floors node. I'm going to copy that and then paste it in below. So this will now create proper stacks for the entire building. Now at this point, I still want to actually add a top to my elevator shaft because uh, without it, it doesn't look quite right. And also, I want to make sure that if we scale up our building, if we scale the uh, floor height to something high, I don't want this thing to stick out of the roof at the same height as the rest of the floors. So uh, let's deal with that next. We're going to temporarily keep this at six so we can work with that. So in order to do that, let's create a split node. Now, as I might have mentioned before, the split node is basically two blast nodes, one with its uh, option turned on and the other one with its delete not selected option turned off. So whatever group you feed in here, one output will take one part of your geometry and the other output will take the other set. So this one I'm going to call split top copy and in order to filter out just the top copy we can use the copy number that our copy and transform node here has created now if you retrieve this node from over here like i did it should already come with a copy number attribute enabled so this one and that means that any primitive being output here should have a copy number so down here you can see that each floor has its own number and we can use that to filter out just this top section. Let's go to our split node and then in here I'm going to type at copy num. So we're basically activating the um, attribute copy number and then without any spaces, this is important, type two equal signs for a comparison and then we need to type an expression to retrieve the top floor of our building. And to do that, we can simply grab the amount of floors that this copy floors node has made. So this expression over here, grab its result, which in this case is seven, copy that parameter, and then let's paste it in here. If you paste the relative reference, then it will automatically add it inside backticks. So it evaluates as an expression. And then we're just going to subtract one from that. So by subtracting one, what we're going to do is effectively select our top copy, and then it will split out the top result on the left channel, which we're seeing right now, and the rest on the right. So we don't actually lose it. We just keep both. Okay. So if I grab a merge node at the end, I can plug both of them back together and we should have the entire stack. So now we have this channel here for the top of our elevator shaft to work with. So then 
let's go ahead and create the top cap for our elevator. Let's grab the top section here, the elevator shaft outside. Copy that. Then I'm going to rename this one to um, elevator shaft top. That should do. And in this case, I want to shape it so that it sits right on top of this top element here has the same thickness as our floor depth um, and is a little bit wider than our elevator shaft. So that shouldn't be too hard. First, let's merge this one in with our merge node, like so. At the moment, it should just create a block at the bottom. So uh, we need to change that. Let's grab this shape and I'm going to make it slightly wider than the rest of this shaft over here. Under both of these, I'm going to add 0.1 to its width. And also to its depth. All right, that looks okay. Then um, let's position it on top of this element. So I'm going to add a spare input to this one. And inside this spare parameter, I'm going to plug in my copy floors node over here. So we create a link between those two, like so. And then under here, let's set the position in center Y to the bounding box maximum of our uh, copy floors. So let's say negative one, D underscore y max and that will set it on top of our you know current elevator shaft shape but it's not quite what we want so first i'm going to change the shape of this object and then we're going to position it let's grab the extrude node here i'm going to go over to it extrude depth and i want to change that one to floor depth so that will make it significantly less deep then Let's go ahead and change its textures as well, so it stands out a bit more. Um, over here, for the side UVs, I want to use the concrete bars. Change that over. Again, for both. So for the side UVs, I'm going to set this one to sweep around. Let's remove this expression. We don't need it here. Um, delete channel we'll get rid of that and then I'm going to change the scale of this to 0 0.21 in the first channel and let's say 0 0.25 in the second so that should make this properly sized then for the top UVs let's do this next I'm going to change these ones to um, roof panels Now, the roof panels, in this case, are a galvanized metallic texture, and a lot of the detail in them is actually present in the normal map, so we're not going to see that very easily. Um, but this should work just fine. If you want to make sure this is tiling properly, though, you can temporarily give it a different texture in Houdini. Let's say uh, Concrete Panels 2. And I just want to make sure that our projection method is set up properly. So I'm going to use orthogonal unitized and then set both our scales to one. So if you have a proper texture size, then you'll know this will work. Let's uh, make sure this is set to roof panels and then that should be okay. Now for the bottom, I'm going to keep it on concrete walls. I'm also going to keep it on orthogonal projection um, because the bottom of this should basically just be the uh, concrete texture that we use everywhere else. So let's leave that one alone. Okay, so that deals with the texture setup. Now, at the moment, like I mentioned, this is still too tall. But before I do that, let me just plug this up so it's part of the building, so it's a bit easier to see. Let's create a new copy the points node and place this one onto our um, 
current elevator object. Let's go over here, drag a line from the top, and I'm going to create a new copy to points node. Now we need to make sure this line goes into input 2, and then our elevator shaft here is going to go into input 1. When we do that, we are going to copy it on top of our floors, right? So now it's in the right place. And if we look closely, we should see that it also um, matches the floor height. Now, I don't want to pull from my elevator shaft shape here, but I also don't want to mess with it. So um, let's grab this line here that goes to the output of our network. And let's plug it into our copy to points node, our new one do that. So now if I look at the output of my node, of my tool rather, you see that we are now copying our elevator shaft into our building. So that's nice. We don't have our collisions yet though, we also need to deal with that. But before we do that, let's make sure this is set up properly. Okay, so now that we can see how it's positioned in the building, and if we go inside, we can also see it in here. Let's uh, reduce the height of this top module a bit. So over here on the left, what I would like to do is move this grid for this top section down. So it sits at the exact height that I want it to be at for the top cap. Let's grab our height position and let's make some changes there. What I would like to do is first subtract the position of this by one floor height. So let's grab our floor height parameter over here, copy that, and then in here I'm going to subtract that. And this will give us a base level. So now if we look, it should sit right on our floor, right there. And then all we really need to do is give it the door height and a frame thickness. So it sits on top of that. Let's copy those. So we need the door height, add that in here, so that will position it right on top of our door. And then let's grab the um, frame thickness as well, let's say over here, frame thickness, copy, and add one of those. So that should now give us enough space over here on top of our door. So just to make sure you have the right expression, that's the expression for the top of the shaft. Now in order to remove this part here above our top shape, um, what I would like to do is increase the height of this shape so it encompasses the entire section here and then we can use a boolean node again to cut it away. But to do that, I need to have a group on this shape. So let's look at that again, like so. And then under our extrude and texture node, under its groups output, and then I'm gonna turn on the top group over here. I'm gonna make sure this one's called top. Seems I set the default value to floor. Um, doesn't really matter. In this case, what I'm gonna do is grab that group and I'm gonna run this through a transform node. So right now we have our top group over here. If I run this through a transform node, it's gonna pull it up. And if we pull it up high enough, like so, it will encompass the entire top section. And in this case, I don't care that it's uh, overlapping or that it has stretched UVs because it's bigger than the inside shape. And as such, it won't transfer its UVs. It's just gonna cut it away. The only UVs we're gonna transfer are from the bottom here. And that's fine. So let's go over here, grab our floor height to make sure that it's always tall enough to cut away the uh, remaining part of the top section and plug it in over here under translate Y. So this should always work. I'm gonna call this one raise top and I'm gonna color it a little bit yellowish because it's an important value. Then 
Let's grab another Boolean subtract node. Place it over here. And I'm going to plug in from our split top copy the left channel, which should be our top section right there. Then subtract from that our raise top. And that should cut that part away. So now we have that part secure. We're going to name this one, um, let's say, Boolean Elevator Top Shape. And let's make sure we plug this in. So like that, we now have our top without anything intersecting it. So that should work fine. If you want to give it a little bit more space, you can always go and move this thing up a little bit in this expression, uh, maybe multiply this by two. That will give you just that little bit more space up there. I'll leave that up to you. That's an aesthetic thing. Okay, so um, last, I'm just gonna add a group over here. Name this thing cap, okay? So let's create a group behind our extrude node and call that cap. If you want, you can use that later. Okay, so with that, we now have our elevator shape complete. Now let's make sure it's positioned and rotated in the right place. Because now that we have it here, we need to make sure it aligns with our arrows that we have in our visualizer. So let's um, show all of our objects and let's see if we can pull that one up. And let's pull up our parameter panel, go to the elevators and staircases section and enable our grid visualizer. So with that, it should now show our grid. Now you will notice that it's a bit high but you'll notice that the um, elevator shaft is not pointing in the right orientation and that's because we decided or I decided to build it in the X orientation not the Z orientation and uh, well that's an issue because as a result it's pointing in the wrong way and I've noticed that was a mistake when I originally made the project but it's a very easy fix and the reason that I'm repeating this same, you know, mistake here is because some of the code of the staircases also rely on this orientation. So I'm going to repeat it here. And well, like I said, there is an easy fix in this case. So I'm just going to go with that. Let's create a transform node. And I'm just going to rotate my elevator shaft 90 degrees clockwise. And if we do that, then now it should be pointing in the same orientation as this arrow. So that should be fine. I'm going to name this one Rotate Orientation. Copy it. And I'm just going to plug it up here. Now, it's not completely necessary to do this because this is, of course, a square shape both the X and Z directions are the same, but this is going to be relevant for our staircases later. So I'm going to put it here just to keep this result uniform. So at this point, we now have our elevator shaft and it is properly textured and properly cut. If we go inside the building, you'll see that this should be correct. However, we still have this grid and currently this grid is too high. So let's just go over to our um, grid visualizer over there. Find our raise to roof node. And I want to make a little adjustment here. So let's have a quick look at this expression. Let's um, open this one up. And we can see that we are taking the floor height. We're multiplying that by the floor count plus one. So that's all of the floors plus the roof. And then we're adding 0 0.5 just to make sure it sits on top of that. Now I'm going to change this code. So first we remove that plus one. So it sits on top of the roof of the building. And then I'm going to add over here to our plus 0.5, the height of this element there. 
Um, now in this case, we can do that in two different ways. We can either copy the entire expression to get the correct height, or we can use a bounding box expression. In this case, it's up to you. Um, I'm just gonna copy the expression from the top of our elevator shaft and use that for now. So over here, we have the elevator shaft top. Let's go to the center expression. So I'm gonna move my cursor over behind the floor height and I'm gonna press shift end. And normally this should select everything behind that point in your expression. So you can simply copy that. And then over here inside brackets, let's add in that expression. So I'm just gonna grab that and let's say apply. And that should now position it um, just above this part of the uh, building. So we still need to add the actual top cap as well. And for that, I can simply grab the floor depth, which is the extrusion height of this top cap, right? Let's grab that. Let's say this plus that. And then apply. Okay, so now it's sitting on top of our elements and we don't have to worry about that one anymore. Okay, so we're almost done. At this point, the only thing we still need to do is set up the collision model, because right now our elevators aren't part of our collision just yet. And also um, deal with a little bit of cleanup behind here. So we have a proper color assigned, we triangulate the mesh and we also add some bevels. So to do that, um, first let's grab that from over here. We already have this code. So I'm gonna grab our bevel and clean network from below our um, roof railing. Copy that, paste it in right here. Let's say in front of the switch, but behind the copy the points. Plug that in. And as for the color of the elevator shafts, um, I'm just going to make this a 0 0.25. So a bit darker. And then um, in order to set up the collision, I need to make sure that if we don't have our elevator shafts visible, so if this toggle here is off, then we also don't have collision, right? Because we don't want to bump it to something invisible. Let's copy this network, paste it in over here on the right. And I'm going to plug this in behind our copy to point node again, before we do any of these bevels and triangulations here, or at least the bevel, because, well, we don't want bevels in our collision mesh, if you recall. And then I'm just going to copy one of my collision nodes. So let's grab one of these. If we paste it in, it should give us a new number, basically sequentially after the last one we added. So that should in this case be um, collision five. Let's plug that in below, like so. And then let's hook it up into our collision system. So down here under the collision mesh, we have our object merge. Let's add a new entry, copy that and set it to five. So with that, we now should have this part as the collision mesh. Okay, so with that, everything should be set up. We have our mesh, we have our collision, and we should have all of our visualizers in the right way. Let's just double check. Let's change the scale back to 3.5. And if everything's correct, then this object should be scaling properly as well. So, um, yeah, if I change the door height to say 2.5, then here it should scale the top, which is working. If I go and scale the frame thickness to say 0 
it will make the door a bit smaller and it seems it also makes this taller and that's because well i did double up the top here if you don't want that um well basically don't multiply that value here on the end if you don't then you also need to make sure you remove it um, over here as well and then finally we have our wall thickness so if we change that it should change the thickness of this to say 0 0.5 i will make the um, elevator walls a bit thicker just like the walls on the outside of our building right so with that let's um, go to the end of our network make sure that's rendered then save our tool okay and then we can go to unreal let's test it out so let's go to student tool foundation building we can say re-import or we can do rebuild all instances if you do this it will re-import but it will also rebuild every single copy of the tool in your scene so keep that in mind in this case i only have one copy so let's just click that and when i do that this will update and there we go so um assuming everything is correct let's see is it pointing in the right direction and our grid is in the right place And then let's test it out. So let's grab our character over here. Let's drop them onto the roof. And we should now have a proper playable elevator shaft with collisions. So we can jump on top, All right? And we can go inside. So yeah, if you have some kind of elevator blueprint, then you can stick it in here and it should work. But like I mentioned, we are going to make our own elevator in the second module of the master class. Um, I will show you more about this at the end of the first module of this foundation module. But for now, um, this will do. So next, we are going to deal with the staircases, which of course are going to be here. So we are going to copy the elevators and then we're going to build the stairs inside of them. So, um, well, we're basically going to have this module here with the stairs like i showed you before but yeah for now let's call it a video here um, i'm going to return this one back to normal and then i'll see you in the next video where we're going to tackle the staircases and then after that we'll deal with the balconies and the rest of the building wrap it all up so thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video have a good one